Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to Middle Earth, quite literally, I guess, because what I want to do is one of our landscapes in Middle Earth. Yeah, we got our 2D stuff back here, a little bit of 2D art. I'll be talking about the different principles of that, and actually I have another board here so that people can see what it is that we're using. I might even see if I can snag, or maybe some of the prints that I have. Let me see if I can find those. Uh, not quite sure where they might have gone off to. I'm just going to grab, I guess, this one right here. And we'll just uh, maybe show this one here. A armored wolf. Yeah, it's, uh, I just can't believe it doesn't stop here. It just, I mean, I think it's just going to keep raining every day, all day. All right, here's one of our, this is one of the few surviving ones that I've got left. Re respect the umbar, right? Your core series of umbar. And the same, same crescent board right here. And you're going to see this is divided into these nine sections. Basically, these nine sections are basically miniature versions of the entire aspect ratio. And these four areas here, something called center of interest. Now, it's been a while since we did one of these, so we'll, we'll have to maybe explain that a couple of times. But yes, center of interest here. You look at this. You can see we tried to have kind of off center, right? Nothing red dead center. Look at this. Look, the horizon line is more like it's down here, not in the center. So we don't want stuff in here, especially that that's kind of your danger zone right there. <laughs> I'm sorry, these are the areas where you want that stuff to go. Now we've got pretty clear right this is pretty much the drawing that i'm going to be well actually it's a painting sorry and i'm going to actually go see because the original artist is paul lassane or lassan what one or the other and you can see we're going to go heavy on this side and of course the light kind of is streaming down this way it's going to be another one of those shall we say muted color type things definitely going to be some muted color so i'm going to figure out horizon line maybe maybe right there not too bad let's see if our wall is here the deeping wall we're gonna have to have this stuff over here we are gonna try and push the hornberg right to about there i think something like that hey dano how you doing yeah it, it's kind of crazy here today that's it's not exactly ideal i'm just gonna see if i can do this here because uh, I don't think this would be a super long, super long thing to accomplish here. So here's your, there's your ramp right there of the hideously designed castle slash fortress. Yeah, definitely, definitely not well designed at all. Now here, let's uh, get the some of our rocks going this way now. And now what we're gonna do is start to get rid of some of some of this. All right, let, let's see if we can start to maybe really get our drawing finalized here. Here's your, okay, we got this tower right here. <clears throat> it may just have to be a little bit taller. All right, well, no problem, Aussie. Uh, I've, I've been wanting to do these, as you know, for just absolutely forever. So um, I'm really, really glad to be able to finally get around to doing one of these. Yeah, I've been, I've been missing these a lot. And, and hopefully th we can just kind of uh, restore all of the all the paintings that I don't have anymore. Because, yeah, they're pretty much all gone at this point. So I would love to have the paintings back. I'd love to have some of those back again here. We're just uh, also going to cut some of that away too. Now, the thing is, no, no matter which way you hold this, there should still be some kind of an interesting composition. That That's our main goal here. I'm surprised that there's as much perspective as there is right here. Now, this has the wrong angle on it. We are going to correct this angle here. Uh, yeah, Dan, the... So the whole idea behind this is to basically take this five by seven and just a piece of that crescent illustration board, same stuff that I, I told you about. And each one of these is essentially the same aspect ratio as this whole piece of board right here. And the idea is we want our center of interest to be over here. We don't want it sitting in the center here or up here or up here. See the horizon lines down here. And this is one of my few surviving paintings. You can see horizon line move down. We don't want things in the center, right? 
trying to avoid the center. Uh, actually, Dano is, uh, Dano's been doing some really nifty 3D sculpting. Dano has some great bases. Uh, Dano, if you want to pop your bases into the, the chat there so that uh, p folks can see those, uh, those have really been working out. And yeah, I know uh, like that story I told you about how I just I would make these broken up bases but then paint the stuff as if it had just come from Home Depot or whatever. Or I think uh, overseas that would that would be called DYI stores. I think that's what you guys call them. Yeah, we just kind of call them by their local names. Lowe's, Home Depot, or Home Despot is actually what uh, some folks <laughs> uh, have, have called Home Depot at times. All right, here's the, there's that line. We got a little entrance way here and those are almost one on top of the other and we're going to shift this like so all right now i think i think we're getting there with with this stuff we're just about and then here we've got our foreground there too now yeah, daniel i'm really glad that that blender i mean aside from the cost savings I'm just glad that it, it's also been uh, a good to use. I mean, cost savings is great, but cost savings and being able to make uh, some significant process with it or progress with it, that's uh, very cool. Uh, hey, Dano, have you seen Painting an Artist? I think it's Painting an Artist. I, I think he's, well, he did one of these. Well, a lot of people have done this. But I think he did this, and then I think recently he just did the East Gate of Moria or something like that. I th I think that's what he did, and then I'm pretty sure it's painting in Arda. Pretty sure it is. Now here is K. Okay. Uh, get that going down here. And I I don't want to get too crazy with the with the whole drawing here because a lot of it's just going to get covered up anyways. Boy, Dano. Uh, it, it, this is this is really it's taken me back to when we did all the old 2d stuff it is sort of taking me back now this that got moved over too far here i'm gonna make a change in that going to make a change there so i've already made a couple of changes uh, in the drawing here which is uh that's fine to be expected uh, the the horde of people walking up to it there. I mean, we'll maybe try and do a suggestion of, of those folks too. Alright, then what was our little trap door on the side of this uh this tower right here? Actually, boy, it it shows this even it's got even more of a turn to it. So we'll have it go this way even more, I guess. Yeah, cause okay now now I can have, okay that's uh that is a little bit better, and now this doesn't actually come quite so far over here. Uh, let's see. So uh, sorry if I miss anything in the chat, because well. Uh, the the chat is pretty well covered by the camera boom, and that's something that I'm hoping will be very much changed. Now I, I don't know how the the new desk and all that is exactly going to work. It, it might take some, well, not might. It's going to take some reworking, and there's probably going to be some challenges involved, to say the least. All right, that got moved over too far, way too far here. Yeah. Okay, that's that's a little better. And maybe we'll just say that comes out in front of that. Okay, we'll, we'll work with that. That that's all right. And then we've got this line here, and then I got the coming down this way. This is going to be a bit like the Argonaut. Oh, that's what I was going to do. Oh, it's just been too crazy today. I wanted to actually have pictures like my Argonaut, uh, at least uh, so that folks could see those, what we've done. But, of course, there's always the Instagrams to go check out that. And I do have, yes, I do have my camera here. 
so I can uh, take pictures along the way. That's what I was hoping to be able to do. So we're going to say that's our drawing right there. Now, just uh, give me a second here because uh, people here would get really angry if I didn't have at least some kind of step-by-step -step pictures along the way here. So let's just, uh, let me just grab these. Okay, there we go. There's there is a drawing. Now, palette-wise, let me uh, turn this this way. Let's get a couple of brushes out here. So we've got to get our cooler colors back here. Warmer colors down here. We got some radiance of radiant yellow. Uh, the That's the uh, turquoise. The blue, the green. Violets over here. We actually got the uh, brilliant yellow pale up here. Indigo, black spinel, van dyke brown, brown matter. Ooh, um, gee whiz, Aussie. Uh, check this out. So this was one of my latest patreon videos here look at that waterfalls and now it's it they're pretty much dry this is the crushed glass snow that we use to try and get the to secure the bubbling water but look at this so this is the latest tutorial video i i just it's rendering right now i'll be uploading this probably overnight or something like that after the stream but yeah this is the this is a smurf marine right here painted that with the oils that uh, was episode seven Episode 7. Now, when it comes to the uh, our liquid here, we're going to have probably a little bit more liquid because if you remember, we kind of start out more in a watercolory type fashion here. So indigo, indigo here, and we'll just uh, pop that back here like so. Now, almost a little bit of watercolor style negative painting, but again, very very washy here it's what we did on this one it's exactly what we did there uh, oh thanks thanks so let's see and thanks dan oh yeah though the waterfall i mean i i really love doing those i mean i could just do those all the time i, could, I really 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 love doing those okay that didn't quite go where we wanted it to no big deal no big deal Oh, that's right. We did weather top. I keep forgetting about that. I keep forgetting that we did weather top before. All right, just do that, and a little bit of our blue gets down here too. In some ways, this is a bit like our Argonoth painting that we did. So you can see how we're very precise with our brush strokes here. We we fret over every last. <laughs> Brush stroke, don't we? Oh my god, this is uh, always so hilarious. All right, let's start to get some some darks here. How's about some Van Dyke brown? Some Van Dyke brown, and we'll just uh, boom right there. Whatever. Uh, again, we really sweat the details, don't we? We really we really worry about the small things. Uh, or maybe not so much. Maybe not too much. Yeah, just let that get darker there, too. And sometimes I'm just going to use maybe some thinner. Don't have to pile up a whole bunch of paint on here. No reason to be doing that. Uh, let's get a little more of our Van Dyke Brown here. Or VDB, as we're going to start calling it. Because, you know, that's what all the cool kids do. Everything's all initialized today. Everything's got to be initial, so let's darken that down a little bit too. Again, just uh, keeping it somewhat on the watery side. Now I'm going to maybe start to warm some things up here a little bit. There's some Terra Rosa into that. I might... I might even start to get a little bit of an opaque in here now. Just a little bit of opaque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, we'll let's grab some of that radiant violet there and whatever. Again, we really fret about the small little details, don't we? That is uh, gloriously messy. Gloriously messy. Yeah, people are just uh, absolutely ready to flee in terror. They're just, that ain't what we were thinking was going to happen. Here, let's get a little bit more of this. 
And our deeping wall, and then whatever this is over here. Bam, don't care. Terra Rosa over here, don't care. No, that's a little, that's a little too much thinner. I don't, I don't need that much thinner. Again, Terra Rosa, a little bit of our violet there. So warm and cool right when we talking about that did we not did we not say are you not entertained there did we not say there was going to be warms and cools and all that kind of good stuff it's about a little bit uh this right along here like so uh honestly the only painting that i've got left is this one Every single other one that we did is has been purchased. Yeah, every single one is gone. There are no other ones left. Everything's gone. Pretty pretty wild. So that that's why I wanted to get back into these Aussie was just to well kind of replenish my supply, right? Because I got none. I have none whatsoever. Don't have any. None for me. Very sad. Very sad. All right, tracking this down too. Maybe a little smidge of our indigo down here, just to darken that. Uh, over here, too. We've done Rivendell. We've done Edoras. We've done a whole bunch of stuff. And oh, now this is one of the ones I never did. Oh, we did Lothlorien, too. Holy smokes. Yeah, what? <laughs> we did so many different ones. So many different ones. Now, we also did the Shire. We also did a painting of Sauron. We also did a painting of the Witch King. So, yeah, we've done plenty of landscapes of Middle-earth. Well, we did Isengard. We did the Isengard, so we'll have to revisit that, of course, so that Sauron has somewhere to hang out. And uh, Crocodile, if you got any pictures. Hey, Elsa Days. Boy, it's been a while. Thanks, Elsa Days. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. I hope that you're doing well. I know it's, it's been a little while. Everybody's schedule, just like Aussie's schedule, is, is, it's been crazy, right? Everybody's schedule has just been really nuts. I know it's been crazy here. I mean, even this week, I thought... <laughs> I, I thought we were finally maybe past some of the crazy stuff. And then uh, all of a sudden I realized, nope, no, you are not past the crazy stuff. There's plenty more where that came from. All right, there we go. So I think now we're starting to get this uh, figured out here. Uh, still doing the, still doing the Slinishi stuff. Well, I mean, nothing, nothing wrong with Slinishi stuff. I mean, we we love our Zinch here, but uh, nothing wrong with some Slanesh. But I haven't done or Slanesh either way. But it's been so long since I painted anything that had a Slanesh slash Slanesh feel to it. I'm sure there's uh, there's plenty of stuff that I could find 3D printing wise that would would fit the bill just right. I still got to get some of the blue in here too. Some of our indigo from from the background here. Don't want to forget that. Uh, darken down some of this. So, Elsa Days, I hope that you're doing well. And uh, yeah, hopefully your your schedule hasn't been too too difficult to deal with. I, I know just for so many folks, life and schedules have just been absolutely crazy uh, I'll go with this here uh, what is this ah see now I feel it okay there's a little bit of bluishness to that I might even do uh, some of our yeah here even a little more of that bluish gray there we go now I'm now I'm feeling it now I'm feeling the bluish gray here that's better for whatever reason, just uh, just weren't quite able to achieve that. And of course, uh, here's some of our some of our latest video stuff that we've done. This 
This waterfall scene was a blast. A 3D printed miniature from Great Grimoire, and then uh, lots of waterfall stuff. Just using the heavy gloss gel, the same stuff we use to make snow effects. And of course, this is the video I was just shooting last night. Joss was doing that, a, a little bit of Space Marine action there. A little Primaris, a little Smurf Marine. A little bit of a Smurf. Just a wee little Smurf. All right. Now I'm going to try and look at this. See, I'm holding the brush on its side here. Oh, remember that? That looked like it was all dry because it was all very watercolory and not like the way people are used to seeing oils. Yeah, guess what? That there is still wet. In some ways, the thinner that I'm putting on here now that's mixed in with our opaque is actually sort of reactivating some of the paint that's already there. That's a little bit more of our indigo there. I didn't want that to get too light. That's all of a sudden started to get kind of light. So we're going to cut down again. This is our Hornberg right here. Uh, actually, I'm just trying to think if anybody... I'm going to have to figure out who has done a 3D printed miniature amongst printing goes ever on Medbury and such of all the Rohani stuff that I've got. Which one has a a piece that is most like Helm Hammer Hand? Uh, it might might have to be printing goes ever on because he's done an awful lot of Rohan stuff, and it it, it tends to be a little bit more generic little more universal so i think maybe we might be able to go with that darken this down too and you can see we're starting to refine our rocks guess what i'm going to take another picture of this right now because we've now that we've started to go back in with our semi-opaque stuff we're starting to see a significant change here so i just i like to do this if you check out my instagram you can see all the other 2D art that we've done here, of which there is a lot. I'm making some fancy bases. Uh, well, also, days. That's. Uh, I'm glad that you're able to have some fun with the basing, because well, I mean, you know how much I love basing. You, you know, that's just that is. Uh, that's my thing. I really love the heck out of that. I just enjoy the basing stuff so much, and I'm kind of glad that you're able to. Uh, Kind of get a taste of that too. Definitely. A bit lighter here, maybe. Also, a little hint of our blue in there. Uh, I know we're, we're obsessing about the blue, but that's. This is a little bit. Remember the. Well, even the Argonaut had a lot of blue sort of reflected light in it and such. But if you recall, the. Oh, I had to be our Ascilioth, yeah where it was all very muted, very grayed down colors for sure. Try and lighten this up now. So yeah, Croc, if you have any pictures of your Sunish stuff there, you want to share that into the, the chat or whatever. I'm sure people would get a kick out of seeing that here. I'm going to just see, look at that. I can soften up that edge, can I? I can soften that up. Uh, Elsa Days, the other nice thing is that, well, as you can see here by, by this little indicator there people have been very very generous they've uh, been contributing towards uh, a lot of the new equipment i've got a amazon wish list going and people have been really really nice uh, contributing to that and uh, we've got we got new cameras and there's even well I, as you see by the thing there's a new desk coming here because basically if I want to use the new cameras, this physical setup here is, is no good. None of the stuff here works. If I changed one thing, I had to basically change everything, which obviously that's a lot. That's a lot to do all at once. So that's why we're very grateful for folks that kind of helped out to, to make some of that happen. And even uh, the folks, uh, I know a few folks have gotten resin for it because, well, we're going to be using tons of resin. All right, so I've, again, got some more of our uh, lighter tones in here. Now over here, we gotta, we've got to go back. That remember the Terra Rosa, and you know, I'm gonna actually let some of the uh, brilliant yellow pale get into that. And now it's gonna be on these rocks over here. I don't want them to get too too light. 
Perhaps a little brown matter to, yeah, knock that down just a smidge. And maybe, and again, even this filbert brush, you see how we're kind of holding it on its side, trying to, once again, make some some secondary rock patterns here. It's a, think of it almost the way you see, you see the guys using the palette knife, right? The, the Bob Rossians of the world. Except we're just uh, just using ourselves a regular old hairy stick. So else today, I'm glad the things are okay. Uh, sorry that everything's all kind of busy. But, but glad things are relatively okay. All right, there's uh and now here I might also darken that down. Also make it a little bit more opaque. Also at the same time kind of soften a few edges there. Again, this is all, all this paint is wet. So I should be able to get in here and do some softening of the edges. Uh, yeah, well, here's uh, here's hoping, Dano. Here's hoping that works very, very well. Ah, there we go. See? Not just darker, but it kind of softened that edge. Just a smidge right there. Just a, just a bit. You know what? That's got to be a little, little taller there. Maybe even a little taller to there. We're probably going to come back in and lighten that. Boy, I remember the Lothlorien, uh, well, uh, the Minas Tirith one. That was another architectural one that just, wow, perspective, perspective like crazy. Holy smokes. That one was, that was a difficult one. Now, we're getting almost straight up here into brilliant yellow pale territory. And this is our, starting to pop in some highlights on a few areas here. But you can see how that's starting to blend in with the existing stuff, right? Because even though this was done very, very thin, still is going to blend together because uh, that's that's oil paint for you, right? That's oil paint for you. Uh, oh, and actually, Dano, uh, this did arrive. I'm hoping that I can get some of that burnt umber we talked about, but oh, here it is. So there you go. There's the Prussian blue. It's kind of hilarious that we did that Space Marine with Prussian blue, but that was this arrived today. So it was it was about nine and a half hours too late. Nine and a half hours, a little, little too shy there to be able to use for the painting video. But uh, fear not, fear not. We'll certainly find a way to test that and our existing. Gamlin Prussian Blue. Just like we tested the Indigo from Williamsburg and Windsor and Newton in the same video. I'm sure there's a way. Actually, it might, well, my Easterlings, I don't know, maybe, maybe we will. Maybe that might be uh, an interesting way to test it out because they do have a fair amount of blue in them. All right, there's our Hornbrook. See, that's starting to get brighter and brighter. And guess what? We still haven't even gone to the lightest of the brilliant yellow pale there yet. Still haven't quite gotten there yet. I will over here. Just kind of start this and then look at this. See how it's kind of mixing here? Look at that. It starts to mix. We're kind of scumbling this a little bit. I think I'm actually also going to go with some of my warmer Terra Rosa color here. And again, we, we could still we could use a blending brush here, right? If we feel like that's a little too rough, but I mean it's not supposed to be totally smooth, anyways. And back to our brilliant yellow pale, because right in here. You, you can see that the light sort of uh, hits the painting right in this area, doesn't it? Now I'm going to try to walk this back a little bit here. There you go. Hmm, maybe a little bit more. 
right there. Okay. Uh, it's starting to we got we got a pathway into the image, don't we? Gotta let people walk into that picture. Gotta give them a way out too. Yeah, Dano. Now I really want to also get the the one uh, the the burnt umber like we've been talking about because I don't know something tells me there's going to be a big difference, like a big old difference. So I'm I'm curious to see that as well. Uh, you know what? That uh, okay. We'll let that work its way up there. Back to our brilliant yellow pail. And I've just been using the big old brushes, haven't I? Have I used any tiny little brush yet? No, I've just been sticking with the filberts because they've got themselves a, that chisel edge, right? Line this up to... I guess there's sort of a tower over there. We'll do this. Oh, look, that still can get lighter. And uh, I know, oh, this uh, this part of the deeping wall also needs to get a little lighter. And then there's this little tower right here again. Not the uh, not the greatest design of a fortress ever. In, in fact. Uh, not not very good at all as far as the design goes uh, even without the stupid hole over here it was uh yeah not not up to snuff as fortresses go uh well Kraka. now how is speaking of schedules and stuff uh how has your schedule been lately i've, I've seen that that you've been able, sorry, able to stream and such. I wasn't sure now uh, if there's been any craziness there that's kind of a uh, taking you away from the painting here and there. Just seems like everybody's had that happen to them. That uh, they just uh, they're all being sort of taken away from what they would like to be doing painting wise, just by well life stuff as we start to get some lights over here. Right, darks are great. No, oh, thanks, Elsa Days. Appreciate that. I really do. Uh, I'm just glad to be able to get to do one of these again. I, I wasn't sure I was ever going to get a chance to do one of these again. I really, really enjoy the heck out of these things. And of course, what we're 40 minutes in. Yeah, this is this is 40 minutes in, right? And uh, 40 minutes ago, it was just a blank, blank piece of illustration board. That's all it was. Again, that's uh, episode 7 of our chapter study series. I believe we started out with Blood Angels, Dark An then Dark Angels, then Black Templar, then White Scar, and then we did a... A salamander as we darken up this some more too and then our latest our ultramarine so as this dark you can see here look see how there's sharper edges here these are we don't want these to be terribly sharp over there uh, not just dark over here but also again more more sharp edges all along this here is going to be very important here and look at, say we're using the chisel edge of that brush versus the flat edge, the broad edge. We're using the chisel edge here. I'm going to actually get a little bit more of maybe the brown matter. And you can see here, this is kind of that same little, almost a dry, brushy type of a stroke here where we don't, I don't want absolutely everything to be a super hard edge there. See, we're kind of breaking this up into more identifiable shapes because back here we wanted to keep that a little bit more generic. It, it's in the distance anyway, so it really should be 
much larger shapes and here you can see uh, the grounds a little more uneven now up against the uh, the deeping wall there but at least we haven't outlined it completely have not outlined that completely here let's uh let's do something that looks like a little bit of grass tuft type stuff right there hey bitron how you doing now thanks thanks uh thanks dirk Dennigan. yeah i've only painted ultramarines or smurfs uh, as part of commission things and the last last smurf marine was painted gosh probably 2012 maybe could be 2013 i don't know i'd i'd have to just kind of go back and look but it's been a while so bitron how you doing uh, i hope that it uh, you're having some fun painting your terrain uh, like we were talking about i mean it's it's it never never is a bad thing having more terrain painted is it now nah, we're getting some towers painted well that's that's extra cool uh, yeah well bit run uh i i know you'll have those uh those will be up on your instas there at a certain point like all the other nifty terrain i'm gonna maybe some more darks work their way oh yeah yeah now you see i've kind of switched and i'm i'm sort of using the broad end of the brush instead of that that chisel edge you can see that whole different type of an application there right and now maybe i can get a little smaller here i don't know Let, let's see what happens let me try and do some other uh, details in here of course this door was pretty hideously designed too it's right it's, it's like here's a here's basically a screen door that all people have to do is just basically walk up there with a with a stick and you can just pretty much knock it down yeah not not the best design no uh no murder holes or anything like that right no uh no oil being chucked on them or arrow slots in the side on either side of the gate there so yeah we might need a, a little rethink there numenorians ah but oh that's uh oh that's what i forgot downstairs sorry about that uh sorry about that dark dan again yeah i've got the gosh what are they the lannister red cloaks yeah, I've got those downstairs. It was pretty funny because uh, the the preglaze, I think as you saw, just made things happen really fast, right? Actually, the that ultramarine was the same way. There there might be some folks that say, "I'm done after preglaze." Uh, it is possible. Now here we're just gonna start to indicate uh, some additional detail some additional architecture in there if we can here let me just go this way again this is not a, a small brush oh, just kind of a junky brush nothing fancy here at all it, it does remind me though of the the osculius oh my gosh redoing that one that's going to be a bear the Minas Tirith one the Rivendell one there was some uh there were some beasts as far as some architecture even the Lothlorien one that was that was not the easiest of landscapes to paint I'll tell you that now this needs to be darker here also a little bit more on the bluish air look at that see see that yeah, almost like uh, this is casting a bit of a oh now I see where the heck the lights come lights coming from this way not this way so that that all starts to make more sense to me now okay all oh, starting to make a little more sense now Elsa days I did ironically enough way 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 back in the day paint some Oceanians uh, probably 2005 or 2006 it was many many moons ago uh, you thought I couldn't get any lighter here did you well we can get lighter we certainly can 
Now, this is a little bit like a, remember a Rivendell landscape was a bit like this, but the light that came from the one side, and it was very, very dramatic, and it made some, some parts of it extra warm. And then we had to really make sure our background, background was nice and cooled down. So that we got that also edge contrast here, right? Lots of edge contrast. We're pretty much going at this with our brilliant yellow pale. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, well, I'm I'm not quite sure. Oh, I know someone. That's right. Someone gave me some Tim Tams at Gen Con years ago, and I became obsessed with Tim Tams ever since. Yes, the the Tim Tam obsession has lasted quite a number of years, at least seven, eight years or so. You would think I would have seen maybe an advertisement for them or something on a on a footy game, but no. Never actually seen uh, Tim Tams advertised in a footy game. Now there's your three pieces of wood right there. And then our gate here. Well, I'll have to go back into that, but I'm going to get me another quick picture now that we're starting to work in some of our little details right here. And again, we're, we're not even an hour in. We're not even an hour in, and I think we've made ourselves uh, some pretty darn good progress. going to uh, get uh, move over in the direction of the deeping wall here. Again, starting to think about where some of our Highlights should be again with the light coming from that other direction. Hey, Lethal Shadows, how you doing? Yeah, Croc. Uh, well, my favorite's always been the the mint chocolate. Uh, Kathy's has always been the was that the salted caramel. I think that's her favorite. But apparently, well, like you're saying, there's there's a bazillion flavors that we'll probably never ever see here, aren't there? Never see. And everybody, please give a Lethal Shadows Gaming a follow. And also Lethal Shadows, oh, speaking of which, Lethal Shadows. Uh, I do believe we'll try and paint this tomorrow on our stream. This was printed by Lethal Shadows. Lethal Shadows can give you a lot more information than I can. But uh, yeah, there's, there's that fantastic material right there, very uh, lots of nice little details in there. So that's what we'll be painting tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah, that uh, I just love me some Tim Tams. Wish, I mean, you can sort of get them here. You have to obviously very much special order those. If you're going to do them on Amazon, well, then you're going to be getting a ton of them. Not that I wouldn't eat all of them. But you're going to be getting yourself a lot all at once. Now here, I'm going to take this and we'll use that as a as a blending brush here. We're all here. Let's uh, work in some more lights over here on this particular tower. Start to think about some texture here. Start, starting to get some stones for, uh, well, reasons, right? Starting to think about some stone texture all over the place here. Wow, raspberry, mango, banana. Actually, uh, I approve of all of the above, uh, Crocodile. Yeah, I'll I'll take uh, any and all of those. Yeah, I've, I've got no problem with any of those flavors. They they all sound delish to me. I am totally good with those. You know what? I'm probably going to have to expand my doorway there again. That's okay. Probably will have to expand that out. And here, maybe I'll get a little bit more of the light also hitting our uh, little pathway here.
there we go so see that's starting to get a little light there how's about along the the wall over here and we've got our crenellations and we'll just start to space these out i'll hit the light on a couple of them the rest those will mostly just be just be dark there so that's about as far as we're going to go with the the lighter colored crenellations might try to catch a few little bits of stone texture on this where we can and uh, again we still even this is not the lightest color that I can put on here I can go lighter than this yeah I can go lighter than that uh, let's see yeah so uh well obviously we won't uh we won't be able to put our snow effects on there during the stream but you know we've uh who knows you might even see cobalt blue again like like on that one that we did so uh, there there might be some cobalt blue again Uh, so now bits run the the 15 mil of I guess for whatever reason that you know as soon as I hear that I just keep thinking flames of war either that or team Yankee this it, it just uh, that's what pops into my head when I when I hear 15 millimeter tank army but I don't know maybe flames of war I, I think flames of war is 15 right or or am I just not remembering that right uh, somehow I think Flames of War is 15. I think I'm going to get, yeah, I'm going to get the side of that a little lighter here. Just reasons. Like so. Now, where's, uh, maybe I'll just use this. Let me see how this works here. It's going to be okay. I guess I'll get a little indigo into that too. Because that's only got, out of this whole thing, there's just one crenellation there. This only has three. Seems a scant amount, but that's how it is. All right, Elsa Days, you have a good one. Have yourself a good one. Thanks so much for hanging out as long as you could. Appreciate that. And again, everybody, Lethal Shadows, 3D printing service. We will be uh, trying to give that one a go tomorrow. So you'll be seeing, as you can imagine, several different types of uh, blues there. Well, I'm sure break out the phthalo green as well. Here, let's uh, again bring these crins all the way over here. <laughs> there you go a crispy snack for all all those into medieval history crenellations it's a brand new snack and now what we're going to start doing is maybe think about a couple of uh, smaller details even in the rocks here haven't really done that yet but we got ourselves a soft smushy brush that just uh, might work Ah, uh, so one build. Okay. Ah, uh, all right. I see. Uh, I see bits, Ron. I see where you're going. Where you're, what you're thinking about there. I actually have Team Yankee vehicles here that just were bequeathed to me. And of all things, I've got a Hungarian Flames of War army. Of course, there's the French army that I constructed. Only ever got to play twice. Hey, mood template. Nice to see you again. All right, well, Lethal Shadow, uh, yeah, well, you'll be, I'm going to actually, let's see, this is only hour, six minutes, and I'm definitely going to try and get this up on the YouTube channel. So, yeah, definitely going to try and get this up on the, the, the YouTube channel here because uh, it, it should be short enough that I think we'll, it'll work just fine. Here, a little bit more of our doorway there. Uh, not not sure if any dwarves have been tossed around here lately.
Uh, yeah, uh, Lethal Shadow. It, it's uh, oh man. Uh, oh, that was the other one that we did. That was the Lonely Mountain. Yeah, that's one of the that's one of my tutorial videos for the Patreon page that I did. And talk about, I mean, it's a landscape, right? So it's pretty much a Bob Rossian type of a thing. Uh, I know there's uh, someone named Timbo Took or something like that. Uh, he sort of dresses like a hobbit and does sort of Bob Ross type paintings of Middle Earth. They, uh, I, I think, no, I don't think he was in our chat once, was he? But yeah, Timbo Took, that's who that was. I think that's how his name goes. I hope I'm not getting that wrong. Ah, there. That uh, cast a wee bit of a shadow along there. Now we'll start to maybe build some of these crenellations too. I think we got two more windows coming down this way. Uh, do the same on this side. Or well, archery, archery slits, I guess. A little bit dark there again. That the darker that is, the more our edges are going to stand out. It's all about that contrast. And again, here we've got to start smaller little details here, right? Breaking up that hill into smaller sections. So Moot Template, glad that you're doing well. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, uh, maybe we, or maybe not, that we may or may not put our, our little crowd of folks that's walking towards Helm Deep there. And it's amazing to see how it's almost, I mean, it's not dry, but it sort of almost feels like it's dry. That's uh, a little, little too much of the brown matter there. Yeah, looking to have some shadows cast on some things here. So, you know what? I think we want to have a little light, a little bit of light being caught right here, but I still need a little shadow on the other side of it here. So there's our shadow on the other side. This also, I think, could use, stand to be darker right here. Ah, I think more of our indigo as well something more like that and then we will maybe come back in uh hmm yeah not quite full-on brilliant yellow pale i will get a little bit of our warmer color in there and we'll just say maybe this one area of the the rock is again catching the light that's coming down from that other direction there Nah, hey Dano. Yeah, well, like like they say, don't blink, uh, and especially with the 2D art. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you think you 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 can't blink with the 3D stuff with the miniatures? Well, you best not blink when it comes to the 2D art, for sure. Okay, I might. Uh, I think I'll go with uh, some darks to do the wall texture here. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw a few of these along the wall and then we'll get back into that with some of our darker texture so yeah i wasn't sure just how long i was going to uh, be able to stream tonight so that's why i thought something like this pretty pretty solid as far as the architecture of it and you know what, what it is that we're looking to accomplish from a visual standpoint i know i think it was our lothlorian one and our Rivendell, those were four plus hour landscapes. Those those were substantial. I'm almost tempted to do my Argonoth again after uh, after this for for next Thursday because I really enjoyed the heck out of that. I would like to have that again. Look what we have again. Look what we have again. We have Fern Dragon. Fern Dragon, thanks so much for that raid. Ah, it's nice to see you. I hope that you've been doing doing well. 
Uh, look at this. We're back to our landscapes of Middle Earth. It's been a long time, hasn't it? It's been forever. The only one I've got left in my possession, all the other ones have sold away, is our Corsairs of Umbar. So uh, what we're doing is uh, working on a p simple piece of crescent illustration board, 5 by 7 working with the oils, lots of indigo, even some terra rosa brown matter, and brilliant yellow pale out here. So Fern Dragon, I hope that you're doing well. Uh, I know everybody's, uh, it just seems like everybody's schedule is nuts. I know mine has been really, really weird, uh, especially the last two or three months. So how have you been doing? I hope that you had yourself a really fun stream. Ah, oh, thanks Fern Dragon. Now the very first ones we did, this was, uh, believe it or not, hasn't even been a year because these were... Uh, from June of last year. There they are. There you go. So those are the first two ones we did. That was actually on my birthday stream, the Minas Morgul and the Baradour. Now we'll be doing those again too because I don't have, I love me Minas Morgul, I don't have any. All the paintings are gone, so I have to uh, have to remake those. All right, now what I'm going to do is uh, do something like this. Again, we're going to start putting some Maybe some stone uh, texture in here. A little bit of stone texture. Maybe a little lighter. Just a smidge lighter here. Uh, so, Fern Dragon, what did you do on your stream? And again, the raid very much appreciated. You know what? I'm, I'm going to actually go a little bit darker underneath our. We know that there's these three boards here, right? Say so that's their shadow, and the shadow there. All right, uh, Fern Dragon, you have a good one. And again, thank you, uh, thank you so much for the raid. That is appreciated. So for all the folks that are new here, normally I'm doing miniature painting. Normally, well, you know. Here's uh, my latest miniature painting video. Bit of a landscape right there. Bit of a landscape. So uh, from whether it's, it's things like that or here's another brand new video that I just shot. A little bit of a space marine right there. Or uh, more 3D printed stuff like our fabulous Agama Rising or busts. We also do busts here. Look at that. A little bit of a bust action. The one common denominator is that it all gets painted with the oils all painted with the oils that's what we're working with now and uh, we started on this one hour 16 minutes ago one hour and 16 minutes ago uh, it just looked like that it was just a piece of white and that's it ah Bacar, thank you so much thank you so much for that sub that is appreciated ah, thank you very much and well of course uh, we kind of love our middle earth here we also have to repaint Isengard. He's like, seriously, dude, uh, trying to destroy this. Uh, if it weren't for those pesky Ents, boy, those darn Ents. And let's see. Uh, here's Gandalf. He says, uh, all right, guys, look for me. First light towards the east. Is that east? I thought east was this way. Ah, why did they make me an old man? I got so confused. So thank you so much for, for that sub. So yeah, we uh, we do a little bit of Lord of the Rings here. If if you check out all of the uh, if you check out my highlights, every single session that we do here is saved as a highlight. Sort of like a YouTube channel. Uh, I don't think there's any commercials. Yeah, I don't think there's any commercials, but it is a lot like a YouTube channel. And you can watch them all start to finish start to finish now here i think i might i might go with this a little more of my red i think yeah there we there we go it wasn't quite looking like this uh was being hit by the the light that's coming in from this direction but now it seems to be in you can see how we'll, we'll take the brush and kind of shove it in different directions, right? To get different textures out of it. Ah, uh, Hootie, how are you doing? 
Uh, so, Hootie, all of the videos are on YouTube. Now, the Patreon ones, they are all unlisted private videos. So the only way you can see those is uh, if you're on the Patreon page. Uh, I, I suggest if you're going to watch the, the uh, Twitch sessions, just watch it on Twitch as a highlight because some of the sessions are 10, 12 hours long. And, uh, yeah, there's no way I'm going to have a 10, 12 hour long YouTube video, right? So uh, some of the longer sessions, uh, those you're probably best off watching those on, on the Twitch channel right here. But the, the Patreon stuff, that's all going to be based on YouTube as well. Uh, just obviously only if you're a Patreon will you, will you get a chance to check those out. Here, I'm going to... Yeah, just making that doorway a little bit uh, less prominent there. And then this, I just realized there's a Hornburg there. Then I also also do uh, a little bit of a change right here. Okay, that's more like it. I wasn't quite uh, square up with that one. Now... Okay, we've got these rocks over here. We'll have to develop those just a bit more, too. Now, let me see if I can start to... hint at some folks here on the battlements, on the walls. Uh, lethal Shadows, I think there is there is some improvement on the horizon. There, there's some other ancillary things, uh, but I, I think maybe there's, there might be a bit of a, a turnaround about to happen. Hopefully, I think part of it was just, well, I kind of suspected what it was from the get-go, and just when you kind of have a really good idea of what it is you're dealing with, you just don't get quite so concerned about it, and I think that that's also have has something to do with it. Whereas I just goes like, yep, I'm pretty sure I know what this is. Uh, let's see. Um, so, so Hootie, the all the Patreon videos, they're all full length videos. They're about a couple hours long, and they they cover a whole range of topics, a whole range of topics, uh, basing. Uh, even just color theory there's also terrain in there uh, and there are some multi-part series like that uh, figure i just showed you on the waterfalls that was actually three parts yeah because there was the basing then there was two uh, while painting the figure and then also the the waterfall effects so yeah lethal shadows it's it's one of those things where uh, sometimes once you start to maybe notice a little bit of a positive change, it just uh, it's a bit more of a relief. And let's do a little bit more of the again the little stone texture in there. Maybe that's a little too too dark. Uh, so no inks, hoodie. These are all oil paints, like I was saying. Yeah, there's uh, no inks. Even even on the acrylic stuff, no inks there. So this is all oil paints. And it's the same oil paints that I use on the miniatures. Oh, thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. So I mean, here's an example where this was one of our color theory and oils videos. Let me see if I can grab the miniature here. So we started out with color charts like this. Then we actually did a 2D painting like this. And then we did a miniature. So this is all part of one video. Again, trying to express the... Uh, what uh, kind of how you you work the oils, but also a little bit of a color theory, and then of course, well, the the miniature itself too. So we're trying to cover a little bit of everything there. Uh, no problem, Hootie. It's uh, it is appreciated. And there, uh, oh, gosh, there's at least 1,100 hours worth of videos on the uh, on the Patreon right now. Uh, because every month I make up somewhere between 20 to 24 hours of new videos. Just like that uh, 
that Ultramarine you saw. Again, that's our next Patreon video. That's going to be getting uploaded to YouTube tonight. Uh, so, Hootie, this is my late night stream here. In some ways, this is more for, say, the, the folks on the other sides of the ponds. There are Euro and Aussie friends. My normal time, like tomorrow, the about 7.30 to 7.40-ish central time. Uh, that's the same goes for the Monday night stream. So tomorrow it's going to be starting much earlier, much earlier. And I do believe we'll be painting up this uh, frost elf right here from, from Lethal Shadows. Uh, thanks, Hootie. Appreciate that. So yeah, the... Let's see, what was uh, some of... Oh yeah, the... Uh, even one of these uh, Mato Riders, we did as a three-part. Uh, let's see. And here's an, well, here's some of our typical army painting series. Right, I think we've got another one up here. There's another army painting series right there. And then this is one another three-part episode here, a diorama of Galadriel versus the Necromancer. So, and of course, uh, these guys here, we did a three-part series on one of those as well. Uh, Kutbowski, I'm glad that the, the hours uh, work well for you. I know it's uh, it's kind of early in the morning there, but uh, I mean I would love to be able to stream during the day, but uh, that's that's when Kathy streams. So uh, yeah, I can't stream during the day because that would be sort of your evening time, right? But yeah, that's uh that's when Kathy streams. Now I think I will just very quickly here just sort of intimate that there's a there's some folks on the road here. We'll put some gaps in there as well. Now, uh, yep, Hootie from Chicago. So that's uh, that's what we got the the Central Time Zone. Even though uh, we're pretty far east, uh, actually almost about as far east on that time zone as you can go, and still be on Central Time. That, that central time zone is quite expansive. It goes uh, it goes very, very far west. And it comes much further east sometimes than I some than I often remember. So here we're gonna I think that's settled uh, enough that we can maybe start to put some of our folks here. Again, just a little hint that there's some folks walking into into the Hornburg here. No, nah, well that's uh that that's a pretty darn pretty close there for sure. Very cool. But yeah, I wish that I had a little bit more flexibility in the times that I could stream. I also obviously have to leave time for uh, filming stuff. Well, all for all those Patreon videos. So which means that I'm either filming or streaming. That's that's why I never get to watch anybody else's streams. I would love to get a chance to either catch a Drax or a Steeler or something like that because they're usually streaming in the, the late night times. There. Again, just trying to tighten some things up. Uh, the Saturday stream can can really vary when it's going to start. It can be start as early as, say, 4 o'clock. Sometimes it's just later. Now, I would love it if I could get back to, say, my 3.30, 2.30 starts or something. But, yeah, I don't think... Uh, I think we're pretty much past those. I'd love to be able to start a little bit earlier. Uh, so, who do you... Now, I used to do, well, used to, I, I did 2D art for many years before I started doing the miniature painting. And I always enjoyed the oils. But for since the miniature painting is what I do for a living, once I discovered that the oils are vastly superior for, for miniature painting, uh, yeah, it's it's just been the oils ever since. The oils are far more durable they are more luminous the colors the darks are darker the lights are everything is just much more luminous when it comes to the oil paints 
They're cheaper in the end by a significant amount, actually. They're easier on your brushes. And uh, as most importantly for me, I can paint about 70% faster with the oil paints than with the acrylics because there's just so many things I don't have to do with the oils that I have to do with the acrylics. So it's kind of a multifaceted thing. There's several different aspects. Hey, Doji, how you doing? Uh, Doji, we're finally getting a chance to do our, our landscapes of Middle Earth again, right? A very long hiatus. Uh, hopefully, I can just kind of keep doing these maybe on Thursday because, well, all of my uh, all of my other landscapes are sold, right? So I gotta I gotta redo them anyways. And uh, the oils are easier for freehand because oils are thinner than water. So, I mean, you basically have everything. You have the price, you've got ease of use, the speed, everything. It all just kind of factors together. And, I mean, even for folks that uh, aren't necessarily doing this for a living, well, if it's cheaper, that's better. If it takes less time, that's better because I think that's mostly the thing people struggle with. So that's, uh, again, another nice thing about the oils is you don't really need a bunch of stuff that's different. In fact, I use the same parchment paper that I would stick in my wet palette. Uh, it's the same stuff that I use for the oils. Same same parchment paper you're looking at right now. Look at this. I can go back. All right. And just uh, uh, rework some edges there if I feel the need. All right, a little, little bit of indigo there, making that darker. And there we go. So we've got a nice, again, a nice little contrast here. And by the way, this is an hour and a half in. That's it. Uh, so Hootie, there's just the three brands. Now, of course, it will change uh, depending where you are because maybe availability could be different. The two primary brands, Gamlin, Windsor, Newton. These are very similar in price, very similar in quality. They're both very solid. Now, this is going to run you some more. That that whole handmade oil color thing, they're not kidding. That That's a real deal. These are going to cost you more pound for pound. They are going to be nicer paints, though. Oh, actually, I, I need to get a quick uh, picture of this right here. Let me just snap this real quick here. Like so. There we are. Boom. Because I know people like to have the sort of step-by-step -step like that. Now, some folks, they'll, they'll use maybe Schminky or Rembrandt or something like that. It just it depends what your local availability is. Given where you're from, you'll have no problem ordering from Dick Blick because they're located in Galesburg, Illinois. Now, you could probably get them at Michael's. You also can as we get a little bit more of our Rosa on here. Uh, so yeah, I just get them from Dick Blick, which uh, just happens to be in our in our state right here. So yeah, it's located in Galesburg. And uh, you should have no problem getting those. I mean, no problem whatsoever. Here, I think I'm going to go smidge darker up there just to close off that there we are yeah that just it's kind of again i don't need it to be super 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 dark or anything maybe we want our focus to be over here we don't want to just tilt over here right we're gonna we're gonna do a few little things over here. maybe a couple of more darks down in there and there's also you can begin with starter sets Windsor Newton and Gamlin both have starter sets. Well, so does so does Williamsburg. They have starter sets. Now, of course, those are going to be pricier because they're they're the real deal. Whereas, say your Windsor Newton starter sets and Gamlin, those are more student grade colors. But then that's I mean that's how I started with the oils is just getting those. And then I realized okay I kind of want this color. I uh, got things like indigo, terra rosa. Those are cheap paint. Those are not expensive colors. It doesn't matter who you get them from. Those are not going to be expensive. 
All right, trying to see, I'm going to intimate here. There's a little bit of our lighter highlights hitting those. I might just use this brilliant yellow pale. Terra Rosa might have too much of a pinkishness to it, but we'll give it a shot anyway. Here, let me go. Hit a few of these rocks again. Oh, thank you so much, Hoodie. I appreciate the gift subs. Thank you so much. We'll get you a toast here because uh, sipping a sub. Thank you so much, Hoodie. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Ah, that is appreciated. And uh, Hoodie, the other thing too. Uh, There are some episodes where, quite literally, we're mixing our own oil paints. Now, let me see if I can find. There it is. Where we're actually taking dry powders. And we're mixing those with linseed oil and actually making our own paints. So there's that, too. Uh, that's also, well, for, it started out for all the international folks who just could not get their hands on certain things. Uh, and thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, so again, uh, you can see we're trying to catch some of our light over here on onto these uh, spots, right? To have that light cast all the way over to here, because it needs it. See, see, it's starting to pull it this way just a little bit. And of course, who do you, uh, if you just say, oh, you know what, I was. Uh, I want to see, do you have anything on, well, waterfalls? And I would say, oh, look at this here. Here's a couple of different videos that talk about waterfalls and how you go about those. And there are still plenty of acrylic videos on there. So, yeah, it's not like it's all oil paints. In fact, even now, even at this stage, there's still probably a majority of the videos that are actually acrylics. Even after all this time and all the oil painting videos, there's probably still more acrylic painting videos. So there we go. See, we got our light pulled over this way now. Uh, Hoodie, it works on everything because obviously uh, we're priming it and the Steinol Res primer. And of course, you can get that because guess where Steinol Res is made? It's made by Badger, which is located in what Woodridge or something like that, Illinois. So you can certainly get your hands on that. And all I do is just brush on that primer. Whether it's metal, actually the oils, uh, that's the other thing too, is that they also adhere better, uh, especially to, well, printing resin. I paint on plastic, resin, metal, printing resin, casting resin, doesn't matter. What, what, what's important is the primer, and of course, Dino Res is where that all begins. Oh, thanks, Ian Battle. I appreciate that. But I'm just uh, so glad to get a chance to get back into my landscapes of Middle Earth here. I was kind of forgot how much I missed this. I really, really missed this. This is this is really, really fun here. Here, maybe I'll also uh, catch a few lights on our folks over here as they're uh, into the shadows there. Now, so Hootie, as far as the acrylics go, just uh, it's very simple, mostly just the Reaper paints, mostly clear and liner paints, nothing fancy, maybe about 15, 20 different colors. Uh, I don't really have, I don't even have that many different oil paints either. And it's mostly just uh, because I had lots of the Reaper paints, so I just uh, kind of go with those. Now, I, I do have several videos with things like the contrast paints because in some ways you can sort of uh, train yourself to kind of get into the mindset for oils if you use those in more of a semi-opaque fashion. And actually, well, here was a, this was a whole nother, well, here's a whole nother series right here, our Dark Sword videos. And this is a, a lot of times where I test out some things. Now, there's also, oh, yeah, Metallic oils, yes, we've made our own metallic oil paints. This bust is one of my later videos, just in the last couple of weeks. Half of this is painted in true metallic metals, the other half is painted in non-metallic metals. But uh, it's very hard for anybody to tell which is which, because the whole idea behind that was to show that what makes one work is uh, exactly what makes the other one work.
so thanks so much, Eons of Battle. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, as you can tell, I like uh, I like terrain, right? We've again I've done terrain, but it's also fun to do uh, to do dioramas like this. Really fun to do stuff like that. I think I'm just gonna have to maybe even do a terrain piece like that. I think that would really really be fun. Let's see if I can't uh, scoop up some some lights over here, right down here to kind of again bring this trail right out to the front. Yeah, that was. Uh, There we go again. Our, our center of interest, right? That's how we drew those, those nine, those nine individual spots, and we try and keep our center of interest located on those axes. Look at that. It's sounding all technical. All it means is, don't be putting your center of interest in the dead center right there. And we talk about center of interest all the time because, well, that diorama that you saw, center of interest was a big deal there, wasn't it? Right, we don't want that to be too, uh, too a too symmetrical. You're always trying to avoid that that symmetrical stuff, because it just it makes for a boring con, uh, boring uh, kind of. Yeah, you don't want that composition just gonna be like ah okay, too mechanical, just gonna be boring to the eye. And we'll lighten this up a bit, maybe even. Uh, lighter bits of grass there yeah see so the more little details here the more this gets pulled forward and this gets pushed further backwards and i'm no yeah yeah i think i might actually hit a couple of lights over here again like a uh, the light is coming through this way I know there's actually a few Patreon videos that are 2D paintings as well. I know the Lonely Mountain is uh, it's one of the Lord of the Rings landscapes. That's uh, for the Patreon page. That was uh, very fun. It was it was sort of like doing the classic uh, Bob Ross thing, the whole, the whole landscape deal. And we'll catch a little bit more light here along that doorway. Oh, you know what? This too, maybe. Yeah. Now, uh, so Doji, it's that, uh, I think I might have sent you a link. Well, of course, you won't be able to get it probably directly from Dick Blake, but it's the Crescent Hot Press Illustration Board. And uh, the hot press is, uh, it's got just enough tooth to it. It's the same stuff I use for all of those little, the color charts and such. Same stuff. So it's just, again, a 5x7 hot press illustration board from Crescent. And I'm sure you can get Crescent illustration board in Europe. you got to be able to. In fact, I don't know, I think it's made there, actually. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. It has to be, right? What do we got here? You know, I'm going to take the uh, radiant turquoise and we're going to let that mix. Is that going to be too late now? Maybe a little bit more of that radiant turquoise, but also a little bit more of the indigo here. And you can see this is the same, almost the same sort of dry brushy stroke that we use at the start, right after our pre-glaze. So that's one thing, Hootie, that you'll you'll have to kind of keep in mind that with the oils, uh, hashtag no layers. So you're not going to be, there's no base coat, there's no layers, and it's not going to be working that way. So it, it's, it's one thing, uh, and of course I always suggest when you're starting out with the oils, you get yourself a miniature that's very, very simple, that doesn't have a whole lot of complicated things. You certainly don't want to say, oh, I'm just going to paint my brand new army in oils having never painted in oils before. That, that's going to lead to a little bit of consternation, probably some frustration. So something like this right here. And that's actually, this is a, a video on the Patreon page. Very simple, right? Large areas and simple colors. You might even just pick two colors, one light, one dark, and that's it. Just work with that. 
Uh, make it easier on yourself to get started. Uh, so who do you, it, it, it's not like they're harder or easier because there's many times where uh, people will see, <clears throat> well, even this, right? I mean, this is an hour and 45 minutes in. If this were acrylics, there would have been a lot of other things I would have had to, a lot of extra steps I would have had to do here. Uh, the whole idea of the oils is so that you don't have to do some of those extra steps. It's just, it's one of those things where you have to kind of be willing to, again, kind of step away from what you're used to with the acrylics and uh, kind of get into something that is different. And that, that's a, one of the key things with the oils is just be kind of open to the fact that, well, I'm not going to be doing layers. They're not just super slow drying acrylics. Because, uh, and less is more, and more is way too much. And there's nothing that says you can't work a little bit on your oils, let the paint dry, come back to it after the paint is dried. My army painting series are all like that, where... The figures dry in between episodes because I, I am not filming them continuously one right after the other on the same day. They are filmed days later, so the paint is definitely going to be dry. So here we're trying to get, carry this texture back further here, but not so much of the warm light, right? A little bit of it here that's kind of a halfway in between. Also, to see how I'm using this brush here. Oh, by the way, these are the same brushes I use on the miniatures. And again, the brushes are very cheap. The most expensive brush I'm using is five, six bucks. That's it. Don't use any sable brushes. Not anymore, anyways. Used to. Yeah, so there's uh, there's Dan some of the converts right there, Dano and Doshi. And actually, yeah, if you guys want to post any pictures of stuff that you've done with the oils, you know, any links or something like that, uh, I know you guys have posted things in the discords too. And Dano, of course, if you want to uh, post your sculpting, uh, your cults 3D. Yeah, sorry, Dano, I forgot all about that. So, yeah, Dano, post your uh, cults 3D link there so that people can see some of your, your 3D files. There, a little bit more of that blue. And again, see how we're, uh, look at where I'm holding the brush, right? Way the heck back here, very light. All right, that's what allows me to get this nice light brush stroke there. Very light brush stroke. Caress the brush, don't crush it. So there we are, a little, little bit of our bluish tone right there. So again, the uh, painting, I guess uh, it's an illustration by Paul Lassane. Ah, yeah, sorry, Dano. I completely spaced on that. It just, it's been one of them kind of days. This has sort of been a week's worth of Mondays here. It's, it's been a little bit more of a challenge than I was anticipating. Not when this been quite as many challenges this week. So again, now here, again, trying the whole glittering caves back there, right? trying to push this back. Blues, warmer colors here, but not not the kind of, well, this kind of warm, right? So not uh, not like what we've got, say, on you know, here, we've got the warm colors there and then the cooler colors back here, right? Not quite as intense as, say, something like that. Uh, so Dan again, Doji, Oliver, and Dan, oh, they're all posting... Look at that, Dan, Dan again, Doji and Dano all posting pics. See, look at me spitting that out somehow at uh, 119 in the morning. Yeah. All right, a little bit more again, trying to work out a few more details. And the, yeah, the time savings with the oils is truly unbelievable. What was uh, oh yeah it was it was this thing here I would have loved to have painted this in the oils instead of the acrylics because I could have done all of that stuff so much faster and well that's evidenced by this right here which is sort of a similar concept here this took a fraction of the time I painted this up on stream 
uh, it took uh, less than half the time basically and those again those are some of the sessions that you can watch here on the uh, twitch channel because uh, a little bit longer than something I would post on YouTube all right let me get a couple of more folks here a couple of more folks right there And then I'm going to put a couple of lights in there to it. Something uh, a bit lighter right there. Like a couple of people are, are catching the light there. Something like that. Got our entrance over here. Yeah, and wasn't sure if I was going to be putting all that in there, but it just seemed uh, like a good idea to do that. Uh, so, Hootie, there's uh, one of the... I did one of... Actually, I did a whole series of videos on that... Uh, well, my homemade chapter there. I think that, yeah, this is one where we didn't just do the conversion on there because, well, the shields don't come like that, right? And the swords don't come in their left hands either. So this is something that was also part of the Patreon page right here. All the freehand, everything else. And that was, uh, I think the first part was sculpting the figures and doing the basing. And then the next two parts were was the painting of the figures. So, again, another one of my series. Now I'm going to see if I can't get some dark right along here, there, perhaps even refine that edge a little bit more. And now this going to darken that. Yeah, I think that that really sharpens things up. Do I want to darken this more back here? Let's see. I'm going to take the, well, geez, Van Dyke Brown Indigo. That's going to be quite the dark color right there. But it is, I mean, literally, if you were to draw that uh, tic-tac-toe pattern, boom, right there is right focused on one of those circles there's your center of interest right there uh, so hoodie there's a, a much wider selection of colors with the oils because uh, just the, the way the oils are their their consistency is very different so the the opaque oils are actually the lighter colors and the more transparent colors are actually the darker colors now the the metallics in the oils, that's why we make our own. And I think I've got an yeah, here we go. So like this where we take again the, the metallic powders, mix them with linseed oil. You can get the interference colors from there's one from Williamsburg, but these are going to be pricey. You can get the interference powders instead and mix those with linseed oil and make your own oil paints now that's uh, probably not something you're going to be doing right off the bat i would suggest just get used to the oils first just try them out get used to them but there are uh, videos on the patreon page that show how you can go about essentially making your own oil paints that was especially for the folks who are overseas that maybe cannot get say the williamsburg paints And of course, I always suggest just starting out with fewer colors. You don't need every single one. In fact, I've painted this with uh, one, two, three, uh, eight colors. That's that's all I've needed here. And same goes for most of the other miniatures, like those Space Marines you saw. I don't know, there's maybe a dozen colors max. Yeah, probably about about a dozen maybe 13 or so colors on those uh even with all the freehand and everything else i 
but uh, as, as I was mentioning before, you probably want to start out kind of small, on a smaller scale, just a few colors, and uh, just kind of kind of build yourself up a little bit. Now, it's building up here. We're, again, trying to build up some darks there. Trying to build up some darks. Now, here, I'm going to see if I can get maybe a little more of the stone texture on the wall here, which means we'll go to this. Is it, ah, it's just dark enough. Dark enough, but also gray enough. It's very important. Uh, so, Hootie, it's a. Uh, I would suggest actually, uh, even if you just watch one of the Twitch sessions, right, or even just check out some of my uh, YouTube videos. It's um, it's much easier to describe it actually just by watching it. And it's a, it's an entire phase that we call the pre-glaze, where we slap a bunch of darker colors on, we wipe them off with makeup sponges partially, and then we come back in with lighter colors. So it's e the easiest way to describe it is uh, actually go check out the uh, go check out the YouTube channel or even again like the Twitch channel here, and just watch some of the especially those initial steps. That's really important. That's that's kind of the uh, the critical difference right there, especially in that first half hour. I would say, kind of focus on that first half hour, not so much towards the end, but focus on the beginning. Because that's gonna that will show you just how dramatically different the approach is. Even if you see the beginning of this, this was an awful mess. Even after the drawing, and I first started slapping the paint on here, it looked like a hideous mess. And that's how the miniatures look too when you first start doing them. So that's why it can be a little bit uh, daunting for folks that are new to the oils. They they're used to this. Uh, prime it black and paint one tiny portion of it that's uh, not what we're going to do with the oils right just like here we painted the whole painting all at once all right doji you have a good one thanks so much for joining and yeah hopefully you can uh, watch the the highlight of this or the well for the vod for right now it doesn't have to be a highlight for technically two weeks and again, you can go back and watch all of the previous sessions. They're all saved as highlights. Now, the uh, hoodie, the, the nice thing about the oils is it's also not a race, right? You're not, you're not fighting the clock so much. Not really fighting the clock. And the nice thing is, let, let's say the paint's dry. You say, oh my gosh, I can't I can't do the whole wet blending anymore. You'd be surprised at just how easy it is to get back into wet blending, even though all the your initial applications of the oils are dry. So it it's just it's very flexible. You want to make changes, it's really easy to make changes. Very easy to make those changes with the oils because you can just well, basically wipe the paint away. There are no mistakes with the oils, only makeup sponges. And again, the the whole idea that, that I'm doing here, this is exactly how we work our miniatures. We start out with the just blocking things in, and then we start to refine. We start to say, oh, okay, you know what, now that I've seen this, yeah, I think I can get away with some free hand over there. Or we say, ah, oh, you know what? I thought that was going to be a good idea. No, nah, that's just, that's too much. Or I need something over here to balance it. Just so much easier to do that with the oils. And uh, again, these, these little small areas like this, uh, very easy to do with the oils because, again, the oil is thinner than water. Water has a, a lot of tension to it. Water gets very tense. Oils, not so much. Not very tense at all. All right, so we've really been able to work in some nice little hints of texture here. Nothing extreme. 
Nothing extreme, but just a little bit of texture there. Now, I don't want to lose the crenellations there. Might have to come back into those. And uh, like uh, Dana was saying there, again, just knowing that uh, even areas, where's our elks? Do I have any of those elks? I don't know. Of course, those are all those are all gone. Well, here you go. Even uh, so, this is one of the army painting series here. Just the pre-glaze and some initial light colors, almost dry brushed over the top of it. There were some folks that said, "Yeah, I I was I was good just there." Thirty minutes in would have been enough. So that's the other nice thing about the oils is that. You could say, all right, you know, this is, I need to get this done in a half an hour or an hour. And you'd be able to get some pretty darn nice results in that time. If you wanted to, you know, again, uh, put some more painting in on it after it's uh, dried or whatever, and maybe you play with it once or twice. Guess what? You can do that too. And that that's just what I really do enjoy about the oils is they give you some flexibility. They uh, they're actually easier on your brushes. They are easier on your brushes because uh, here I got uh, the tiniest little dot of paint on the end of that brush. If this were acrylics, it would already be dry. However, it's oils. It's not dry. I can just that thing could be on there for couple of hours or several hours I mean you don't want to just leave it sitting on there intentionally it's a well, it's actually one of the reasons why I use oils for streaming especially because well there's usually a lot of stuff going on and yeah if you get a raid when you got a whole bunch of paint sitting on the end of a or acrylic paint on the end of a brush that's not so good now let's do a quickie little film noir here and it's going to be interesting because one of our forms of contrast is not just light versus dark, but warm versus cool. Now uh, we'll see what happens here when we take away that one particular form of contrast. So you, you can see that the background doesn't necessarily fade as much, but that's where the other form of contrast comes in. You see there's not quite the hard edges here, so that's edge contrast. Sharper edges here comes forward faded edges go backwards so even though we've got we've lost our warm versus cool we still have that so here let's uh, bring back our color there and of course you can do this uh, you know with your phone camera take a picture every every phone's got an app where you can at least just take away the color right take all the saturation out of it you do that, and then you can kind of get a, a little bit of a view. Look, look at your miniature and say, ah, you know what? Boy, there's I, I could use something else here, right? You you think even, oh, yeah, remember the, this guy right here. So when, when you kill all the color, all of that object source lighting goes away because it's not any lighter than what's behind it. It just happens to be a much warmer color and also much more saturated here pretty much all the colors are desaturated so that's why we had to kind of play a little bit of a color temperature game just a bit of a color temperature game and also uh, and, and none of this is white by the way I'm only just now this is the first time I've grabbed any white whatsoever during this whole thing because it's very important to have color here more important than having a really 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 light color is to just have a color and that that little bit of the yellow that went in there that little bit of the terra rosa right and then your your blues in the background your bluish grays that's the indigo now a bit of a staining color uh, I think the Williamsburg version even more of a staining color than than the Windsor Newton. 
I might, I might just get a little more light on the top of the crenellations here. Then we've got these, uh, our three boards right there. Another crenellation up there. But you can see we've, uh, was it now we're two hours in, right? We, it was two hours before we ever even thought about grabbing something that was just white. All of these we've been working with some kind of color in there. Some kind. Uh, thanks, we'd appreciate that. Once again, we're just going to try and move this back here. And it's the same idea as what we did here. Right, again, this is my only other landscape of Middle Earth that I still have uh, in my possession. If you check out the the Instagrams there, I think just about every single one of my landscapes of Middle Earth can be found on my Instagrams there. Just uh, Wapelius on Instagram, same as uh, same as the channel here. Same as the channel. Try to keep it as uh, easy as possible. Can I might just lighten the edge of our little trail there, maybe. And all of this, you know, like all the little details in there, that wasn't there until uh, much more recently. That's uh, I only recently put that in here. Now, of course, tomorrow we'll, uh, if we're doing our stream tomorrow, we'll be going back to just just miniatures again, painting them with the oils. It's going to be another 3D print. And I do believe, well, we're going to be doing some cooler colors. Who knows, we might break out that cobalt blue again. Just might break out the cobalt blue. So this pile of rocks right here, it's, I need some more separation. I may have to darken this a little bit more. I tried to go with the, more of a bluish gray there, but that still didn't quite do it. So I'm going to take this. I don't want it to be too dark, so we're going to grab a little bit of our lighter opaque. But let me see. Uh, okay, that's... That may just do it here. Okay, and now I think uh, I need to bring my rocks back in here. All right, Ken Wife, how you doing? Thank you so much for the bits. I hope that you're doing well. Uh, so, who do you... Uh, Unfortunately, I just have not had a chance to do any merch. There's a, well, at first we didn't quite know what would be the best thing to do. Uh, I think we've got uh, some solid ideas on a few things. We'll try and make those happen uh, oh, as, as over the rest of this year for sure. Yeah, right, Ken Wife? I know that that's, uh, that's going to be quite the effort there for sure. And that's a long ways to go. It's a long ways to go. So... Uh, I hope that that process hasn't been, well, it sounds like it's been pretty exhausting. You kind of figured that was going to happen, right? Uh, so, Hootie, what I, I would like to try and do, and this was kind of the one of the linchpins here, is that what I want to try and do is uh, maybe some small, small groups of maybe five people or so, and uh, we try to maybe get together on a private Discord thing. And everybody has the miniature, and everybody, well, they have as close as they can, uh, some, some paints to match. And then we, we all just kind of conduct basically a virtual class. That's uh, something that I'm hoping to do. So I'm making, this is another, another change that we're going to make right here. I'm making another change. Wow, that's going to be, uh, wow. Well, right, Ken Wife, uh, hopefully I can stream on Saturday uh, during the, the journey up there because that's going to be a heck of a journey. So hopefully, I don't know, maybe I can keep you company with the stream 
and uh, as as you journey up there. And of course, uh, wishing you all the best, because uh, yeah, that that'll be one heck of a travel there. Uh, hopefully, it all just goes perfect. So, who the uh, yeah the kind of the one missing element was the ability to get figures in people's hands. And now with the 3D printing and all the different folks that I work with, that is uh, much more viable. So much easier than trying to somehow piece together some in-person thing. And I uh, would, would try to schedule those uh, for more specific time zones. So that would be one that's a little more Euro friendly, one that's a little maybe more Aussie friendly. Boy, right, Ken wife, that's a lot of that's a lot of moving uh that's a lot of plates being juggled right there. A lot of moving parts. No pun intended. No pun intended there. But I, I do hope that everything just kind of works out the way you'd like it. I know there's always surprises. I mean <laughs> life is always full of surprises, ain't it? So I've been actually been wanting to do things like that for what five years, maybe six years, but I didn't have things like a 3D printer, and 3D printing also you know the average person didn't necessarily have one of those. That's a little bit different now. And then of course we have all the 3D printing services, which uh, that also changes the dynamic of things. So see we're starting to break these up into some smaller shapes now. Uh, yep, right, Ken Wife. Both Armored Wolf and I would love to have several clones of ourselves. Even with about 10 clones, I still don't think I could get all the things that I would really want to get done finished. So, I yeah, also got, but yeah, just a couple little cracks in here again, just trying to tighten up some things in this area here. So typically, the, the Thursday stream, and especially now that it looks like we're back to our landscapes of Middle-earth, the Thursday stream starts at a much more unusual 11 o'clock or 11.30 at night or so central time. The Monday and Friday streams, those tend to start more like 7.30, 7.45 central. The Saturday stream lately is somewhere between 4 and 6 central time. Again, I, I would like to start earlier on Saturday, but sometimes there's there's special times because of like the Kickstarter stuff that we were doing on the what was that the Saturday stream and the Monday stream. So sometimes the that can also alter the stream times, if not the stream day. Uh, so Hootie, it just kind of depends on a variety of factors. Usually the Thursday stream is a little bit shorter. The Saturday stream tends to be the longest. The average stream is somewhere in the five to six hour range. If, if you take in the longer Saturday ones and the mid-range uh, Friday and Monday ones and the much longer Saturday stream. And you can just, uh, again, you can tell by, uh, you look at the the highlights and each of them, well, it has a, a handy little thumbnail so you can see what was being painted. But it also, I do believe it says just how long the stream was. So you can just kind of look at a few of those and you can get a good, good idea for how long a typical stream is. And again, there's a variety of factors that will change that here and there so okay now we're okay I don't want this to be too intense with the dark right there so right Ken wife uh, I do wish you all the best there uh, I'm guessing that you're not even bothering trying to stream uh, or are you trying to do a little bit of streaming just to take a, a little stress relief there because uh, streaming typically is a, a nice little bit of stress relief 
All right, Holy, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And thanks so much for the gift subs, too. I appreciate those because that always makes a big difference, especially, well, gee whiz, we're getting close to that time of the month, too. I didn't realize it. Holy smokes. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. You know what? There is another crenellation over there. Yeah, I thought so, right, Ken Wife, that just uh too many too many things going on, right? Way too many things going on to be able to do that. Although I'm I'm sure it would it would be nice for you to be able to have a focus on something different, right? Anything else, pretty much. Pretty much anything else. Now here I wanna see if I can get one more the architectural detail there looks like it yeah again this, this is just a cheap old crap brush right here but again water uh, the oil is uh, doesn't have the same tension point that water does so you can generally get things to be much thinner if you check out our argonauth especially and i think even our Isengard picture, you'll, you'll see the same sort of a formation with the rocks here, which is uh, very fun. So again, what this does, foreground, middle ground, background, and even miniatures need that too. 